Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back, my dear friends. A very good morning, good evening, good afternoon uh, to wherever you are in this part of the world. And as you can see, this is the SWAM lecture series, uh, and the title is Investment Analysis and Portfolio Management. And my good name is Raghunandan Sengupta from the IME department at IIT Kanpur in India. So, if you remember in the, um, the last lecture, uh, which was basically the 19th lecture, we were discussing about the uh, basic fundamentals of options and in options we consider there are uh, put and call and obviously there were for each put and call and there were two parties one was per person who was selling the put and one of the person who was buying the put similarly for the call also there was a buyer and a seller so in totality you would have four different combinations and then we discussed that how the payoff graph would look like uh, in what which cases the uh, the buyer the buyer will basically exercise the option depending on the price whether it's high or low why i'm saying high or low it will depend on, based on the strike price which was x the person will decide on whether to um, uh, exercise that option um, in the in the in the analysis being being such that trying to exercise that option would definitely give him or her the profit. So, if I am planning to sell and if the actual price of the option in the market is less, then obviously I would exercise the option and sell it to the person with whom I have gone into the option, provided I bought that option. If I am planning to buy, then rather than buying at a higher price, I will buy it at a lower price, again provided I have, I am um, exercising the option and I was the person who has basically bought that option. And then later on we saw with the small equations, equation means what is the total payoff with the max or the minimum. And I also told you that in the equation which was written, so it was a max of a certain value and 0 uh, combined with 0. So, the 0 was basically the price of the option which you want to pay, it means if you are if you are buying it and the person who is going to sell it, it will be just a positive value. The, the same quantum of the price is there. Then we solve the very simple problem where uh, the person has gone into uh, two different types of options. So, with this we will continue. So, this is the investment analysis and portfolio management on the SWAM lecture series. Again, we will continue with the options. So, the lecture title remains the same. We will consider different type of interest rate. So, what we will cover is the types of interest rates, what are zero interest rates, how bond pricing are found, what is the forward rate calculation, because the forward rate calculation would be utilized time and again to find out the different prices based on which we can uh, formulate different type of derivatives. We will consider what is the interest rate futures, what is the treasury rate futures, what is the foreign currency futures. So, even though this what futures are there, we will consider in a very general sense how the prices can be calculated considering the interest rates are given and obviously one of the important input for the interest rate would be the risk free interest rate. So, we will consider the, the discuss the following what are the zero rates, what are the par yields, how we calculate the par yields, the forward rates on even though the word forward rates was there in the last slide also, but in the forward rates it will depend on the duration also. We will consider what, what we, uh, we know as discount conventions, how prices of the bonds and treasury bills are quoted and how they are calculated. Main thrust area would be on the calculation and simple mathematics. What is the duration measure, what we mean by duration, what is the concept of the duration, how it can be utilized to basically uh, find which bond is better, which bond is not good and this basically a, a sort of, of um, meet, um, uh, statistic or a in set of information based on which we can rank the bonds. 
we will consider the interest rate future markets and the treasury bonds future markets and the calculations done for all those things. For the types of rates we will consider that the higher the credit risk. So, we will always be bringing the word of risk into the calculations. So, whenever there is a higher risk obviously, the interest rate would be high because interest rate means that if I want to invest into that, that particular instrument or financial uh, portfolio whatever, if the risk is very high obviously, I will try to definitely I will compensate with a higher return. So, risk and return would go in hand, hand in hand obviously, they would not increase in the same proportion, but definitely they would be a positive correlation or, or a direct um, relationship between the, the concept of credit risk and higher interest rate. Proportionality will be there that means, not inverse proportion in the sense that if risk increases the credit rate decreases or vice versa that would not be there. Uh, we will mention and discuss uh, what is the in treasury rates, LIBOR rates and what is the repo rates. So, treasury rates are basically the rate of interest which are applicable to borrowing by, by a government in its own currency regarded as the risk free interest rate. So, basically if, if you see the reserve bank of India the treasury bill rate for 91 day T bills is basically even though it changes obviously, it practically changes. But theoretically we will consider it as the risk free interest rate based on which we will do or our calculation or, or a datum based on which we can analyze our different investment. So, even though the treasury will sit for 91 days that is the 3 month uh, bond treasury bonds for the government all the interest rates would be compared against it. So, depending on the time frame also as, as I said that if the risk increases the payoff or the interest rate also increases, but time duration would also have an effect on the interest rate. So, longer the time the money is being circulated obviously, the interest rates would, would fluctuate and we are not going to consider the concept of the demand and supply, we will only lay our emphasis on this on this few important um, bullet points based on which you can analyze whether the interest rate is increasing or decreasing. Now, generally whenever different type of banks lend and borrow money within themselves, there is a base rate based on which interest rate based on which all the demand and supply and how the interest rates are calculated are done. So, that is known as the lender interbank offer rate. So, and obviously depending on the demand and supply if you buy dollars or sell dollars, if you buy euro, buy yen, sell yen, there would be two different interest rates. One would be the the offer rate and one would be the bid rate. So, LIBOR is the London interbank offer rate and LIBID, L-I-B-I-D would be the London interbank uh, bid rate. Similarly, in India we have the MIBOR and, and MIBID. MIBOR would be the Mumbai interbank offer rate and MIBID would be the Mumbai interbank bid rate. So, depending on how money is exchanged, depending on the demand and supply, the interest rate would be uh, calculate accordingly and my bar and my bid would depend on the overall demand and supply. So, it would change daily even it, it may change uh, minute by minute. And we will see you try to utilize those values in our calculation. So, so my bar which can be obtained from any financial paper or financial home page uh, link would give you the information of, of the my bar and similarly for the my bid. So, repo rate or the repurchase agreement rate is basically um, the, the rate ba ba based on which people uh, or the banks, entities or organizations per repurchase the, uh, the different type of financial instruments. So, examples of repo rate can be overnight repo rate that means, on a daily basis 24 hour basis what is the repo rate, they can be term repos depending on the time durations. So, rather than going to the details, we will stick to the general definitions of my bid, my board, repo rates, treasury rates and the main emphasis as I said would be the, the treasury rates, the risk free interest rate which we will denote by, by the, the concept of either R suffix F which this R means the, in, uh, the interest rate 
or capital R suffix F. So, this is F suffix we are giving is the risk free interest rate and small r and capital R are the interest rate based on which we will we have done the calculations for the, the portfolio analysis. So, say for example, this slide shows on as on uh, 7th August 2006, the MIBOR and the MIBID at different time periods. So, in the first column, we have the category. So, is the I overnight um, a rate for demand and supply and money. The second row is basically 14 days or 2 weeks um, interest rates, then is the 1 month, then is the 4 month, uh, 3 month. And the time for on the second column as at that particular time, so say for example, at 940 hours or Indian standard time, 1130 and for the 3 consecutive 14 days, 1 month and 3 month, you have the 2 sets of information. The first set of information which is in the third column. I will use, um, so this is the my bid, Mumbai interbank bid rate and this is the my bor. And in between you have the standard deviation for the my bid and the standard deviation for my bor. So, depending on, on the fluctuation. Now, note down one thing which uh, would uh, give you the concept that the demand and supply would have different interest rates. So, if you consider say for example, overnight uh, my bid and my bor, which I will now highlight which is 6 and 6.1. So, if the demand and supply uh, are almost equal for, for selling and buying, so the difference between this my bid and my bor would be as low as possible. If the demand and supply are totally different, then the difference would increase. So, if you see for the 16 uh, for the 14 day my, my bid and my bor the interest rates are 6 and 6.36 while and and obviously these differences which we see of 0 0.36 at that particular time so that was on on 7th august 2006 uh, at for the 14 day my bid my about difference at 1130. Similarly, you will have the my bid and my bor for one month. So, the difference is basically 6.63 and 6.25. Similarly, when you consider the my bid and my bor, I will use the different colors. Say, for example, for the three month, it is 6.58 and 7.16. So, there would be obviously demand and supply which will have an effect, there would be a time frame which will have an effect, longer time frame would have uh, more so called uncertainty. So, the interest rate would basically rest of the will, will picture that, that uncertainty much more than for short time durations where the uncertainty would be much less. <coughs> Now, we will consider a few of the simple calculations. So, first would be the, the n year 0 rate or n years um, based on the n year spot rate. So, when I, when I mean by what 0, what does that particular 0 means will come into the, the calculations. And we will consider that spot rate is the rate at which the money is being sold and bought at that particular fraud time. So, if you remember when we have done the options um, uh, simple diagram, we have used that symbol of S suffix capital T. So, obviously, this capital T is, it should def definitely be small t because time is changing. So, this S is the spot rate at what particular time would basically be the be given by the suffix. So, we will consider the n year 0 rate, n year um, uh, spot rate, the, that is basically the interest rate on investments that's, that starts today and ends n years from hence. And obviously, in between they may be payment, they may not be payment, not for this case, but they would be such cases based on which we can recalculate and find out the exact interest rate depending on any coupons or some part payments are being done as we proceed uh, continue the investment. 
for this case for this n year zero rate there are no intermediate payments so once i invest i get the principal amount and the interest rate after that particular n year so n year need not be integers it can be um, uh, dec decimals also or, or ratios also ratios means say for example if i have 6 months 6 months would be considered as half a year if i consider say for example a time frame of um, one and a half years so it will be calculated accordingly so either given in the months convert into years or if year is given we can use that con consideration so rates on government bonds are not exactly equal to this rate as the government bonds have intermediate payments uh, in form of coupons so even if the 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 demand and supply for the government bonds are quite to uh, quite uh, robust, robust in the sense there is good amount of demand and supply, they mimic and actually give us the information of the interest rate as it should be. But due to the consideration that they are coupon payments or intermediate payments, the government interest rates uh, for the government um, bonds would not be exactly equal to the n year zero bonds. But of, they would be relationship and we will try to find out that how you can utilize and, and given one set of information we can find out the other. So for the bond pricing and bond yield, so we will try to understand how to calculate the price of a bond. Price of the bond means at what price I will buy and sell that bond either today or few years down the line or few months down the line because that bond price should exactly mimic the demand, demand would be coming from the coupon payments and what is the, the buying and selling um, numbers. Numbers means the whole concept of how many people want to buy, how many people want to sell. Based on this, we will try to basically find out the bond price and obviously time would also be there, which if you remember few minutes back, I did mention about the concept of duration. Duration would be coming to the calculation. So we would be finding out how do we calculate the price of a bond if the time to maturity is t years and it pays semi-annual or quarterly or monthly coupons. So in semi-annual case, you will get one payment after six months and obviously if it is one year, you will get the principal amount on the interest rate after, one, uh, after the whole year is completed. If it is a tight duration is two years, so you will get the first coupon after six months, the next coupon after one year, the third coupon after one and a half years and the final principal and the, and the interest rate would be paid after two years at, at time of maturity. Similarly, for the quarterly one and the monthly one, you can do the calculations accordingly. So if it is a monthly one, you will get after each month uh, the, the coupon payments or the interest rate and, and if the total duration is one year, which means that after the end of the 12 months, you will get the principal amount plus the interest rate. But obviously, the interest rate in the case when it is semi-annual and monthly, it would differ because you are paying much more and the interest rate, if, if it is fixed percentage, so it will be calculated accordingly. So remember the zero rate for different maturities used to calculate the value of the coupons at different time points of time are not equal. And, and if you remember in the last slide, which I, we, last last slides which we considered about the MyBit and the MyBor for the same duration and at the, the same time there was a difference. So this is exactly what it says. So the zero rate for different maturities would be different depending on, on how they are, uh, are in need. Need means the demand and supply. The yield on a coupon bearing bond is the discounted rate that equates the cash flows on the bond to the market. So we will also try to find out the yield rate. An yield rate would basically be the rate at which the, the person who wants to buy and sell that bond can understand that what would be the interest rate based on which the equality of the bond price can be calculated such that he or she can understand whether the bond is higher than the actual price, lower than the actual price or the exact price as, as it should be. So let us consider this example. So there are two columns in, in, in this set of information which is given. In the first column is the maturity in years. It could be in months also, but I have just given in years. So it's half, half a year, one year, 1.5 and 2. And on the right hand side or the second column is the zero rate, that is continuous compounding interest rates. So if, if it is semi-annual, monthly, quarterly, we will all con convert that into the, the continuous compounding interest rate. That is point one to, uh, to be mentioned from my side. 
Point number two is that the zero rate values are given with, uh, with the idea that intermittent coupons are not there. In case if the coupon payments are there, the interest rate can be calculated accordingly or if the interest rates um, uh, for the coupons are given, you can find out the zero rate accordingly. So, whichever set is information is given, we can find out the other. But for the time being consider, again I am mentioning there is a time to maturity and there is the zero interest rates which are there for each and every time frame. So, if I draw the time frame, it will look like this. I will be referring to this, this di diagram time and again and for each slide, I will draw it but it is like this. So, in case if you consider the 5 month, so I will draw all different time frames here. So, this is the 5 months which means that if I, if I invest something, so I get back that principal amount along along here it should be along with basically the, the interest rate. So, I will denote P as the principal, I as the interest rate. So, in any independent payments are not there. In, a, in case if I have a maturity of one year and if there, there are no coupon payments, the diagram would look like this. So, this is, uh, this is not to scale. So, do not get confused. So, this is one year. So, this is the 6 months. So, I will denote a 0 as the time frame, half in time period um, is ha half a year, 6 months and this is 1 year. So, in case if this is 0 coupon, it will look like this. I will use the blue color. So, I invest, I get that money along with the interest rate after 1 year. In case if there is a coupon which is paid after 6 months, not quarterly, not monthly. I use a different color, consider it is green. So, I yeah, will make the payment after 5 months, I get some interest rate again uh, this goes on and after 1 year, I get the principal amount and an interest rate. So, this interest rate which are denoted by the green and the blue are not the same, we will see that. I am using the words and in the technical sense how you do not, we will we'll find it out. Similarly, you can do it for one and a half years and two years. Now, continuing the problem, the information set for the problem is not over. It says the consider the example where we have two year maturing in two years treasury bonds with the principal value of 100 and it provides a coupon at the rate of 6 percent per annum with coupons being paid semi annually. We are to find out the price of the bond as of today. So, in this the first slide which is the 10th slide which I have just followed, you have uh, half a year, one year, one and a half years and two years, zero coupon interest sales are given. The principal amount for the bond is 100 and it provides a coupon at the rate of 6 percent per annum with coupons being paid semi annually. So, we need to find out the price. So, this is how we do the calculation. So, this is the bond pricing. So, to calculate the cash price of the bond, we, we discount each cash flows at the appropriate zero rates. So, how it looks like. So, I will discuss each and every term and, and use a different colors. So, can you be differentiate what concept I am talking about. So, consider this, this value of 6 by 2 in each of these and this one is basically the so called coupons which are being paid. So, if you remember in the last slide it was made the paid uh, mentioned that it is a rate of 6 percent per annum with coupons being paid semi annually. So, if it is semi annually the value which you are getting after each uh, 6 months is 6 by 2. So, in case it, it was say for example, um, uh, monthly in that case it would have been basically 6 by 12. So, this is just for the information which I am saying, saying. So, let me erase this one because this would is not come into our calculation. So, generally the coupons are being paid with each, each month would be 6 by 2 and the first one we get after 6 months, the second one we get after 1 year, the third one we get after 1 and a half year and the fourth and the last one we get after 2 years along with the principal amount. 
so let us consider it i'll use the different color so let us consider these uh, the the multiplying factor so if you remember in the in the table which was given 6 months was given of interest rate of 5 percent so which means if i draw the time scale for this one actually i am getting 6 by 2 after 6 months so i need to find out what is the value of the 6 by 2 as of today considering this is today is basically t is equal to 0 so t is equal to 0 so which means that i need to basically find out the present value present value will be 6 okay let me go in this so if this value was x so x would be my continuous compounded to e to the power r t we know the formula r is given by 0 0.05 and t is basically half so that is equal to 6 by 2 so if i need to find out x it becomes 6 by 2 e to the power minus 0 0.05 into half so this value which is written is exactly which is coming out here now similarly if i want to find out that obviously if if i consider a six uh, three say for three units i am not talking about the denomination of, of the currency three units are to be paid after six months we found it out what what is the amount uh, present value of the three rupees would be paid after uh, three units would be paid after one year so in that case again i would have x so diff this x x blue colored and, and green color are different but i am using the color in order to make uh, things clear e to the power r so what what uh, what was r if i go back to the slide the interest rate for one year was 5.8 percent so that value would be 0 0.058 into time frame was basically one year that is equal to 6 by 2 so in that case x would be basically be equal to 6 by 2 e to the power minus 0 0.058 into 1 so this value if i consider is exactly which is here this this whole value this whole value oh am i mistake i'm sorry i'm sorry i'm sorry i just marked it in a different it should be this this value this is calculated here similarly if i find out uh, the present value of uh, the 6 by 2 unit which i will get after 1.5 1 years so let me use the color violet so this is the value only difference would be remember the time frame which is 1.5 and the interest rate is was basically given in the table as 6.4 so it would be e to the power minus 0 0.064 finally when we come into the calculations of trying to find out after uh, two years so the the multiplying factor to find out the present value of that particular amount of money remains the same the concept remains the same so if i use the color um, red red has red has not been used so if i use the concept of so the total multiplying factor would be e to the power minus rt r is basically the interest rate for the two years so that is 6.8 into time period is 2 but what is that value which i have got after two years so there are two amounts one is six by two which is the three unit of the interest rate plus the bond phase value which was 100 so basically it will be actually it is bro broken down into two parts one is the present value of 100 so e to the power minus 0 0.068 into 2 that is one amount another amount is 6 by 2 e to the power minus 0 
into 2. So, when I consider these, this value basically is the last term onto the left hand side of the equality. So, the total value when you find it out, it comes out to be 98.39. So, which means that the if somebody says that this bond has this characteristics what the interest rate as shown in the table, you will get 3 units after 6 months, 3 units after 1 year, 3 units after 1 and a half years and 3 units along with the principal number after 2 years. And the, if the price is quoted as say for example, to me if I want to buy, if it is quoted as 102, then obviously I will do the calculation, find out the value of that bond is 98.39. So, 102 would be much more than what, what I should pay. So, I the if I buy it, that bond I would make a loss and if I want to sell it at that price, I would make a gain. Similarly, if somebody quotes a price of, of less than 98.39, so obviously I should be buying that bond because in the long run it will give me positive value that means a profit. Now, I want to find out the bond deal. So, I found out the bond price, so the, I want to find out the bond deal. So, the bond deal is basically the discounted rate that will make the present value of the cash flow on the bond e exactly equal to the market price. So, we have already found on the market price which is 98.39. So, I want to find a fixed value of the interest rate such that the return which I have calculated which is 98.39 would exactly balance uh, the, the total value based on the discounted rate or the, or the bond deal. So, suppose that the price of the bond in our example as we calculated was 98.39. So, I need to find out the bond deal. So, how do I do it? Now, here the interest rates would not be considered in the sense they would be a fixed interest rate which is the bond deal which will exactly balance the value of the bond price, um, um, uh, the theoretical values of price which we found out was 98.39. So, and the interest rates payments are all the same. So, I would and consider the bond deal as y. So, this y is unknown remember which you need to find out. So, if we find out the corresponding present value of the first amount paid, it will be 6 by 2 that is the total amount which I got after 6 months e to the power minus y in y is the interest rate. So, it can be any symbol also y into half, half means the time duration. So, if I and, and if I and do find out the second present value, it will be 6 by 2 e to the power minus y into 1. The third value would be 6 by 2 into e to the power minus y into 1.5. And the final value, if you see, would be 100 plus 6 by 2 because 100 is the principal amount, 100 plus 6 by 2, that total value multiplied by e to the power minus y into 2. So, and, and that is exactly equal to some of this is exactly equal to 98.39. So, if I find out and uh, do iterations, I can find out the value of y which comes out to be 6.76. So, with an interest rate of 6.76, um, I can find out, I can uh, and uh, tell the, uh, the par yield would be th this bond uh, yield um, is the discounted rate value should be 6.76 such that the phase value or the actual value of the bond which was quoted to be 98.39 would exactly balance that. Now, this value of the bond deal in the moment you change the time duration of the bond and rather than 2 years it can be 2 and a half years, 3 years whatever it is that bond the, the value of the discounted rate uh, or the bond deal will change. Now, remember one thing the relationship if the price of the bond basically increases, which means the right hand side will increase and if the right hand side basically increases, which means as it is e to the power minus, so obviously the value of y should uh, decrease in order to um, have that effect value that the bond price is exactly equal to uh, the left hand side which is calculated based on the bond yield. And you can have a relationship with the bond yield and the, the different type of interest rate of the time duration. 
So, you can use Newton Raphson methods or Rangi Kuta method some iteration process and in that case you will start with the value of x naught, x naught I am talking is basically y naught and you can do iteration till you find out the almost exact value to the third place or the fourth place or decimal based on which you can report the value of y. Now we will consider the concept of par yield. So, even if the word is yield, this is actually is basically the value of, of the so called interest rates which are being paid uh, on a uh, semi annual or quarterly or monthly basis. So, I want to find out the par yield of a certain maturity which we need to find out for the bond where the price is 100, the par yield of a certain maturity is the coupon rate. Coupon rate you remember is basically the interest rate which is being paid per unit time is basically the uh, value of the coupon rate that causes the bond price to exactly be equal to the face value. Face value means the 100 uh, which was quoted for the face value of the bond. So, now here the interest are same, same means the table 1 that means table which you have for 5, 6 months you have one interest rate which was 5 percent for say for example, for um, uh, 1 year you have 5.8 percent, 1 and a half years you had an interest rate of 6.8, 2 years you have basically interest rate of 6.8, uh, 6.4 and 6.8. Now, in this case, obviously, if that if the, um, the duration changes, the par yield would also change and uh, the par and, uh, and it also mean that the par yield value of the concept would also change if your, your intermittent payments change. That means, here it is giving 6 months. What if happens if it is paid each quarter or each week or each month? So, in that case, you have to do the calculations accordingly and find out and given the interest rate, find out the present value of that particular uh, par yield as of today. So, the, for the first case, again considering the interest rate, the C is basically the par yield and as you remember in the problem we had said it is being paid semi annually. So, I will just circle them in order to show that what is the value of that particular par yield which is being paid which is C by 2 and the interest rates being same the present value would basically be C by 2 into e to the power minus 0 0.05 into half. Similarly, for the second case second value which is being paid after one year the overall value would be C by 2 remains constant e to the power minus 0 0.058 into 1 similarly for the second one, third one and the fourth one. That value should be exactly equal to the phase value which is 100. So, once you do, do that, that the, the value of C which you will get would basically be and use the color black and circle it would be 6.87 with the semi annual compounding interest rate obviously continuous compounding but payable uh, um, at the at, at the time frames as it has been decided similarly for this value of all 6.87 also you can do and if the payments rates are changing the time durations are changing you can find out the the the, the value of the the uh, this bond yield also bond yield was basically the y value now in general if m number of coupons payments are being paid per year d is the present value of 1 dollars received at maturity and a is the present value of an annuity on 1 dollar on each coupon then you can definitely find out that what would be the value of uh, the formula will, will be given by the case um, when we find out the values of A, C, M, D. So, these are the unknown quantities given three, three of them we can find out the fourth one. So, the concept would remain the same, the par yield, the, the bond yield and all these things concept remain same and you just plug these values. But remember interest rates, time duration should be basically seen carefully to do the calculations. Now, if I consider the concept of continuous compounding interest rate and, and um, monthly con inter compounding interest rate or m number of times compounding interest rate, uh, the formula is very simple. So, in, in, in the case when we have uh, two different compounding factors, so one is m in number, one is n in number, m as in mangoes, n as in nose, 
and if the principal amount is A, so in the first case, if it is A, A into if the interest rate I am considering for time period of, uh, of for the continuous compounding case with M, I will consider as R suffix 1. So, it is R suffix 1 compounding being M number of times and time duration is T. So, this would be the total value of, of the transaction. Transaction means depending on, on finding out the, the total value considering the principal amount of A. A and, and this form, formula will give you give me the total value of the interest rate plus the principal amount. If I am doing the calculation based on the fact that that uh, the, the continuous compounding interest rate is being done n number of times in a year and that interest rate is R2, then the formula would be this T time frame is same. And if I want to find out the total value considering continuous compounding interest rate for the same time duration, again different color. Let me use the red I have used, blue I have used, green one. So, that will be A e to the power and the continuous compounding interest rate is given as R 3, time duration is T. So, if I need to find out such that they are equivalent, I will just equate them this is equal to the red one is equal to the, the green one. So, this is what is being done. So, in the case A can be a can be is a constant it can be uh, removed. So, you will have basically I will write the formula now in black and color or okay, let me write it in the color scheme. So, it will be easy for you all to see 1 plus R 1 by M to the power m t is equal to 1 plus r 2 by n n t is equal to oh, is equal to continuous compounding case which is e to the power r 3 t. So, if you equate them the formula which is given which is which I will highlight now using yellow one is exactly the same one which we have considered. So, m is basically number of compounding R m is basically the continue this interest rate for that um, concept of m number of compounding and this concept of t is not there because that would not be utilized because time frame is same. So, in the same way it can be removed from the calculations. So, you can find out R c which is the continuous compounding interest rate or else you can find out the relationship between R 1 and R 2 also using this, this formula. So, again A and T can be ignored. So, let us consider an example. So, the bond principal values are given in the first column, time to maturity is given. Now, remember here the time to maturities are a little bit different with respect to what is the actual information based on which we will solve the problem. Again the bond principal values are given on the first column, time to maturity is given on the second column which is in years. So, so 0 0.25, one fourth of a year, half a year, one year. 1.5 years, 2 years. So, remember here that in the initial case it was is basically one fourth of a year. Later on obviously, we can consider one year, one year and one fourth of a year, then one year and one and a half years, one and three fourth of a year. We can consider that, but the pro problem has purposefully left that for, for us to understand and solve the and understand the concept. The annual coupon are, are given and this again the annual coupons which, which are being given can have a different values. I will highlight it as we solve the problem. 
So for the case for one fourth of a year, half a year, one year, the annual coupons are not paid. That means they are zero coupon bonds. They, their behavior is like that. While in this, in the uh, second last case and the last case, which the time duration is one and a half years and two years, the annual coupon rates are eight and twelve. But it, till now, it has not mentioned that they would be paid on what intervals. I'll come to that. That the prawn price values are given as 97.5, 94.9, 90, 96.0, and 100.6. So I need to basically do the calculation based on the last set of information which is given, which is as this. We assume half of the stated coupon is assumed to be paid every six months. So if you remember that uh, for one and a half years and and two years, the coupons was eight and twelve. So in the first case, it will be eight by four being paid. Uh, the coupons being assumed to be paid every six months, and in the next case, the last row was basically for two years duration. It was twelve. So twelve by two would be the stated um, coupon which is assumed to be paid after each six months. So in case it was, say for example, each month, in that case, the calculation would have been done eight by twelve being calculated for each month. Or in other case, it would be 12, 12 by 12 being paid after each month. But for our simplicity, we are considering uh, half, year, um, uh, half year time duration for the coupons being paid. So let us proceed with the problem. So this concept is basically a bootstrapping. Bootstrapping um, in, in a very simple sense is that when you have a very uh, high, uh, the, a very um, uh, a set of boots which has to be tied very tightly. So what you do is that you start tightening the laces of the boots from uh, from the end, and as you tighten up, you basically try to uh, do it in such a way that the grip is solid. So bootstrapping basically means that you basically go step by step and you and you do your calculations such that you reach the ultimate state to find out the final value. So the, we want to find out the zero, zero uh, the bootstrapping method. Utilize it and try to find out the zero curve. Zero curve is basically, if you remember the concept of zero coupons being paid, you need to find out the interest rate for 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 the whole time duration, considering in between there are no coupons. Now in the first case, if you consider the first row, the amount of hundred minus ninety seven point five, which is two point five, can be earned. Out of a value of 97.5, because it remember this this extreme right hand column value, rightmost column value, that value gives you the bond price. So bond price is basically the value which I will pay in order to basically buy um, uh, that bond, or if I want to sell it, such that both the seller and the buyer do not make any profit. That is the exact value of the price at which it should be sold and bought. So 97.5 is that value. And if the face value is 100 such that 2.5 can be earned on 97.5, but the question is that what is the duration? Duration if you remember is uh, basically one fourth of a year which was given as 0 0.25 uh, which is 3 months. So what we are considering is that on an on a, a earned value 2.5 is being earned on an, in, on an in initial investment of 97.5 time duration is 3. So how do we do it? The three now this three month interest rate would basically be the four time because three months when you multiply four times you will get the one year time span. So the three month interest rate is four times that total uh, value which I am getting. So 2.59 by divided by 97.5 is I am getting after each three months. So that value multiplied by four, which comes out to be 10.256, would be the quarterly compounding interest rate. Quarterly compounding why? Because you are are get, getting that payment after each one fourth of, of a year. So first would be after one fourth, second would be after half a year, third would be on a three fourth year, and the last would be after one year. So this 10.256 would be the quarterly count compounding uh, value. So now if I put in these these calculations. This 10.256 interest rate is being quarterly compounded. So M is 4 and consider the time duration is 1 because whether you consider 1 or 2 or 3 that does not matter. 
and we need to find out the risk free uh, this uh, continuous compounding interest rate let us denote it by r suffix c this uh, m does not come into the continuous compounding interest rate. So, I need to find out this formula. So, let me go back to the formula which you have studied. So, this would be R c would be m into because we are getting it from the same formula. So, you need not worry we have already understood this whole concept. So, let, let me write it this formula. So, I can derive from, from the basic thumb rule. So, this is 1 plus R 1 by m to the power m t is not considered here because it can be ignored because on the both hand sides of the equation is there and it is e to the power R c. So, if I consider I can basically utilize that uh, accordingly. So, if you see this formula, so it is m into Napierian log log of 1 plus r m by m. So, this would be m log 1 plus r 1 m is equal to r c. No. And use the highlighter with the yellow color. So, this is the formula. So, here what is known? Information given. <coughs> this m is given, which is 4. Then, in this case, R 1 is given which is 10.256. So, this m again the second value which I did not mark this is also given. So, m is known, m is known, R 1 is known only thing which is unknown is basically R c. So, when you, once you plug it in that equation the value comes out to be 10.127 which is a continuous compounding interest rate for that particular uh, uh, bond uh, value which was you bought it at 97.5 and the total value earned after 3 months the interest rate was 2.5 by 97.5 and you basically found it on a yearly basis. So, this is important and we will utilize that for our this is the continuous compounding interest rate. Let me use the red color hand. So, this is 10 point. We will utilize and, and when we draw the graph, we will come to that. Now, come to the calculation for the second level, which was basically the bond which, which paid after uh, 6 months. So, I bought it or the person bought it at 94.9, the phase value is 100. So, I got 5.1 out of investment of 94.9 and it could be negative also. So, do not worry about that. Uh, in many of the cases, the prices really fall. So, 94.9 is basically the value. So, the in the 6 month rate of interest which I paid was basically in 5.1 into 94.9 and how many times it was 2 times. So, it will be multiplied by 2. So, the value comes out to be 10.78 which is basically the semi annual compounding interest rate. So, m is, is 2 and based on that when you use the same formula, formula when I want to find out the continuous compounding interest rate it comes out to be 10.469. So, same formula which I used just, just 2 minutes back which is that 1 plus r 1 by m to the power m e to the power r c. So, m now it basically becomes 2 and r 1 is now basically 10.748. Now, I come to the third column, I pay a price of 90, hence I get 10 out of an investment of 90. So, this is being paid for 12 months. So, the, the so obviously, it will be 10 by 9 uh, into 1, 1 means because it is 1 year. So, the interest rate comes out to be, I will use uh, a different color now, green it is 11.111 
percentage which is basically with annual compounding and the corresponding in uh, continuous compounding interest rate would basically 10.536. So, here m is 1 and the R1 value is 11.11 and the RC value which is the continuous compounding interest rate for that uh, set of information which is given comes out to be 10.536. Now, we need to find out the interest rate for 1.5 year and here you have to be careful. Reason is that in, in the second last column there is mentioned a point that it is based a coupon of 8 which is paid per half year. So, the interest rates which are being paid, I will mark that. So, this 8 by 2 is being paid after 5 months because they are paid uh, semi annually. 8 by 2 is being paid after 1 year and if you consider the total time duration was basically 1.5. So, 8 by 2 would be paid after 1.5 years. But for this 1.5 years, we are not aware of this continuous compounding interest rate. So, we need to find out. So, the first term on the left hand side is 8 by 2, which is being paid after 6 months. That present value would be e to the power r t, t is 0.5. And what is r is basically the rc value, which I rc means the continuous compounding interest rate value, which I found in, in the case when it was for a time duration 6 months. So, it was 10.469. So, this was the 10.469 value which I found out. Now, you may be thinking why did we do the calculation for this? This was not even though we calculated it, but remember it is being not needed because that was being paid for one fourth of a year which is 3 months. In case that 8 or the 12 was also being paid on one fourth of a year basis. That means, 3 months, then 6 months, then 9 months and then 12 months, then this 12 10.127 value in the first case which would have been utilized. This should be remembered. The for the ne next value which was 8 by 2 which is being paid after 1 year, the, the I will use the value or the color 8 by 2 into e to the power minus means because I am trying to bring it now which is basically e to the power minus r c or r t t is 1 and this value of 10.53 was basically the continuous company interest rate calculate for 1 year. And for 1.5 year we do not know, but obviously the you should ask the question what would be the value based on which we can balance this and find out the exact value. So, if you remember the bond was being purchased for 96, so 96 was on the right hand side. So, in this whole equation, the total values of interest rate as of today for the first 6 months is that first term, I will mark it as 1. The second interest rate which is being paid after 1 year in the present value which I will mark it for by 2. And the third thing was basically the principal amount and that interest rate which was being paid is basically the third one, the total value that should exactly equal to 96 as the bond price and the interest rate for 1.5 years is not known, plug in this value and then you find out the continuous compounding interest rate as 10.681. So, with this I will continue in the discussion in the later class in the 21st class and have a nice day and thank you very much.